Uh-huh. I, uh, have to go. <sighs> Stuck yourself? Just pop it in your mouth. Our saliva neutralizes the nanites. Otherwise, I'd be constantly disassembling myself. <laughs> and by our saliva, you mean... Disassembly, disassembly drone? drone? Right. Hey, let's go in that landing pod over there. Sure, I love doing anything. Sweet, uh, <laughs> I'm open to new things, I guess. We are never talking about this. What were you just watching? In case you were wondering, what you just saw was a clip from a show on the internet called Murder Drones. <laughs> that name alone says so much. So, what is this show about? What makes it worth making a 15 minute review about? And why does it matter? Well, I think it's a perfect example of what not to do when you make an interesting premise and try to bring it into the world of media. But what exactly is wrong with the show? Besides, well, that scene. Yeah. Well, there are lots of different minor problems that add up to a show that ultimately feels unenjoyable. A lot of these problems come from how it's executed. So if you haven't seen the show, here's a quick rundown. Murder Drones is a show about robots who have been enslaved by humanity for basically their entire existence. For some reason, these robots are sentient. Why is that? I don't know, and I don't think the creators care about that either. These robots are called Worker Drones. They have been helping humanity mine exoplanets for their resources. You might think, oh, well this must be a show about some sort of robot uprising, right? Well, that's where the interesting part comes in. The Worker Drones never actually get to that point, because humanity blows themselves up trying to use this core reactor thingy, whatever this thing is. So the worker drones are finally free. They can rebuild their society to their own will. Sounds like a happy ending to me. Well, not really. Remember when I said that humanity blew themselves up? Yeah, I kind of lied. Humanity is an interplanetary species at this point. It was only the humans on Copper 9, the planet that the worker drones were actually mining, that actually died. There are still plenty of humans left, I think. So what are those humans going to do when they hear about what happened on Copper 9? Uh-oh, looks like the Chinese government, I mean, J.C. Jensen, I mean, J.C. Jensen in space, doesn't want their intellectual property running around on their own. So they send three disassembly drones, N, V, and J. Yes, you heard that right, their names are one letter, to King Louis XVI, all the remaining worker drones. The worker drones that survive end up building an underground bunker slash home where they hide behind three doors to survive. Yes, you heard that right. They aren't hiding behind walls. If someone is clever enough to get the key card for these doors, they can lead all the disassembly drones right into the hideout. But you know what? This actually kind of makes sense. This process is overseen by Contourman. Yes, that is his real name. This guy is kind of an idiot. His daughter, yes, worker drones can have babies and it works exactly the way you think it does. His daughter, Uzi, yes, that is her real name, is basically the only one who actually wants to fight back. And with all that down, you now understand the premise of the show. I still have a lot more to explain. So Uzi is tired of hiding behind these doors. So for her class project, you know what? From now on, just assume that all aspects of human life apply to these sentient robots, because I'm tired of saying, yes, you heard that right. Got it? Okay, moving on. So for her class project, she makes a railgun, which... What the heck? She made a railgun for her class project! Well, she's kind of what you would call an edgelord. Bite me! And gets a bit too excited during her presentation. <laughs> so while Uzi is recovering in the nurse's office, with bandages and an ice pack on her head, another classmate named Thad stops by to see her. These two clearly don't know each other past being classmates. This is the most unrealistic part of the show. Someone actually stops to check on their classmate in the nurse's office. This scene is clearly just designed to set up a romance between the two that basically gets scrapped by episode three. Guess what? Uzi is trying to sneak out of the hideout get the last part she needs to make her railgun fully function, and in her words, save the world. 
She tells Thad all of this because she trusts him that much, but I guess she also kind of threatens him. So when her alarm clock, herself, goes off at 3am, she's ready to kick this plan into action. She gets her railgun ready, makes sure to adjust her beanie perfectly, and gets this key card for the doors that is just hanging there, I guess. When she tries to sneak out, her dad gives her a little jump scare, and she has to explain her way out of it. This scene is incredibly awkward. Not because it's well written, but because it isn't. And where might you be off to? Mmm, sneaking out to make out with my boyfriend that I definitely have? <laughs> Seriously, though. Uzi eventually convinces her dad to let her out of the hideout for a school project. I told you this guy was an idiot. Now is a search for the part she needs. A search that lasts 20 seconds, but still a search. But before she can even go looking for a disassembly drone, N ambushes her and manages to stick her hand with this nene tail thingy, I guess. With some quick thinking and anime skills, I guess because watching anime makes you an acrobat, apparently, she's able to blast N's face off. And it actually works for 10 seconds. Apparently, the disassembly drones can just regenerate if they're destroyed. N is rebooting, and Uzi's railgun needs 30 minutes to reload. Or like, 7 minutes, depending on how time works in this show. But turns out, the past 3 hours of N's life have been forgotten, and for some reason, he thinks Uzi is a new disassembly drone. Hence, that scene. Yeah. So now that N thinks that Uzi is a disassembly drone, he decides to tell her about V and J. V is a psycho that N has a crush on. He's very secretive about it. Except for the fact that he tells Uzi about it for absolutely no reason. Secretly, I actually kind of have a crush on her. You can't tell her, okay? I guess robots are just really trustworthy with secrets. Uh, then there's Jay, our leader! Jay is one of the only characters in the show that actually interests me. Unlike N and V, she can actually be intimidating at times. The show does a good job of making her seem like this larger-than-life villain. Someone who knows much more about the company than even her own co-workers. She's clearly a lot more experienced, and just seems like a much more captivating character than Miss Thanos hair and Mr. Anime Protagonist. Anyway, Uzi decides to take this opportunity to morally question N's actions, and just kind of shrugs it off. I was given a job, and I always want to try my best. Oh, well that makes sense. But before the conversation can go any further, Jay arrives, and Uzi is forced to flee. V spots her, but doesn't kill her for some reason. She basically kind of asks Jay if she can kill her. Yo, we got a worker out there I kind of want to practice balloon animal shapes with. Anyways, Jay reboots N, N gets back his memories, and he figures out that he's been tricked. So he starts following Uzi back to the bunker. He doesn't tell V or Jay about this for some reason, and they don't follow him. At least, not close behind, anyways. The next scene, though, is one of the few scenes in this show I'd actually consider a great scene. So Uzi, in a frightful panic, tries to close the door frantically. N doesn't quite get through, but he does manage to hold the door open long enough to destroy the door controls with his tail. So N goes on a rampage, and for some reason decides to keep Uzi, you know, the only one that can make a weapon that can actually hurt the disassembly drones, alive until the very end. Luckily, in the nick of time, Uzi's railgun finishes recharging. This time I won't miss. Uzi, what are you talking about? You didn't miss. You hit him dead on. Your plan just didn't work. But Khan stumbles on the scene and just kind of stands in the way of the railgun. This guy is really stupid. So N uses this opportunity to catch Uzi off guard, pin her against the wall, and disarm her. Luckily, the railgun ends up at Khan's feet. However, Khan is so horrified of these drones and what they could do to the worker drones that he leaves his own daughter for dead. This scene isn't executed perfectly, it could be better, but it's still pretty dang good. Well, obviously it's not good to leave your daughter for dead, but I mean it's willing to go to lengths that even Hollywood usually doesn't go to. It's so heartbreaking that even N feels sorry for Uzi. Then it's revealed that V and J were following N the whole time. Somehow, they don't notice Uzi at all. <laughs> J congratulates N on his accomplishment, and V figures out that they can bypass the other two doors by going through the ventilation shafts. So what was the point of three doors if the other two can just be ignored by using the vents? Anyways, V gets a head start on her body count, and J thanks N for, and I'm not making this up, 
winning the murder competition, I guess, and getting their squad... Branded <laughs> And this is where N actually starts to question his job. He thinks about it for a solid 12 seconds while Jay just stands there, apparently about to go through the vents. So N decides to ask Jay what the company plans to do with the disassembly drones once their job is complete. I get the feeling the company doesn't actually love robots and, like, we might be robots? Wait, so guys, does JC Jensen just hate all of their products? Well, anyways, I'm sure you can guess what happens next. Jay implants a virus in N's system and claims that the worker drones are defective, so she leaves to go massacre the rest of the worker drones. Uzi gets out of her hiding spot and tries to reach the vent shaft, but she needs some uppies. N apologizes for his actions and Uzi gets him to help. Yeah, for some reason the virus does absolutely nothing. Or maybe Uzi just fixes him. But we don't get to see that. So it's all come down to this. Uzi and N get through the vents to find a group of worker drones being cornered by V and J. But my boy Thad, being the absolute alpha that he is, keeps fighting knowing that the odds are stacked against him. Luckily, Uzi and N show up. N stands up to his school bully. Oh, uh, J, you're sometimes kind of mean to me. I wish you weren't. And the fight begins. Uzi takes on J, and N takes on V. The fight is good, but not really anything worth explaining. Uzi manages to get a direct hit on J, and apparently destroys her so much that she can't even regenerate. N takes down V, but decides to keep her alive. Everyone congratulates N and Uzi on their victory, but Uzi is understandably mad at her dad. I'll save you the trouble, dad. I vanish myself! So yeah, Uzi banishes herself, even though I'm pretty sure her dad had no intention of doing that. Oh yeah, the sun kills disassembly drones, but not worker drones. <laughs> so Uzi now wants to kill all humans, and apparently, more disassembly drones are coming to Copper 9. So, that's the end of episode 1. So, change of plans. This video is a review of episode 1. Episode 2 review comes sometime in the future, I guess. <laughs>this show fascinates me. I dislike it, but I can't help but watch it because it has such a unique feel to it. There are so many aspects to this show, some of them I really like watching play out, and then the other ones- This one? This is the one I love. I'm so proud. You're doing great. So proud of you. But uh, this one, I just- Everything he does drives me crazy. The actors are great. The premise is great. The animation is great, even if it feels a bit clunky at times. And even the plot is really good in my opinion. But pretty much everything else about this show is absolute garbage. No, I am not okay. Let's start off with something simple. The characters. A lot of these characters just feel stereotypical. Even Jay, who actually interests me, falls into this category. First off, the Edgelord. The only original thing about Uzi is that she sucks. Not just as a character, but as a person. Well, not, not a not person, but I mean she's a jerk. Which is interesting, but the show tries to play off her edginess as fun and invigorating, but instead it comes off as bland and annoying. And then there's N. The fandom loves N for some reason. I really don't like him. They try to make him fun and innocent, but he literally has murdered probably thousands of innocents, and even at the end of the episode, has absolutely no remorse just because he doesn't do that anymore. Imagine he said that to someone's family. Hey, I know I killed your innocent child with no remorse, but I'm not here to say sorry. I'm here to say that I've moved on with my life and will no longer massacre children. So I'm just saying, there's no reason to be mad at me. A lot of these other characters fall into similar stereotypes. With that said, let's move on to pacing. Like I said earlier, the plot is great, but the way it's executed makes you feel like it's a completely different story than what it actually is. The execution and pacing isn't inherently bad. In fact, pretty much every scene has at least something positive you could say about it, at least in this episode. But the problem is the inconsistency with both pacing and execution. In the exposition montage at the beginning, the disassembly drones are built up to be these big bads. Three robots who can't be hurt can easily hurt others and have no reason to not hurt others. Then, Uzi just blasts N's head off using a rail gun she made using spare parts and regenerates, but doesn't remember Uzi, so he thinks she's a new disassembly drone with 
no questions asked. Now, the disassembly drones feel like weak idiots who are apparently now empathetic and have more personality than all the worker drones combined. Granted, their personalities are annoying, but they are personalities. The problem with the pacing specifically, though, is that literally every episode, in case you didn't know, happens in one day, or usually just like three hours. The problem is, there's no opportunity for character development in one day, but they force it anyways. Take what I said with N. He starts out as the guy who would kill any worker drone, no questions asked. But by the end of the episode, in apparently like maybe half an hour, he's all of a sudden N, the nice guy, six foot tall robot who wouldn't hurt a fly. And we're supposed to just accept that. But despite everything I've said, all these problems with the show, none of them annoy me as much as the comedy. Oof, what could I say about the comedy that you can't just get from watching the show? Pretty much all of the jokes in this show, and there are a lot of them, fall into two categories. One, a meta joke that an actual six-year-old could come up with, and two, tense moment is broken by a character doing something stupid. When I say meta jokes, I don't mean breaking the fourth wall, I mean a teenage robot joking about hormones. I'm not mad at you, by the way, just generally hormonal. A teenage robot joking about hormones. When I say meta, I mean Uzi joking about, in her words, daddy issues. When I say meta, I mean J.C. Jensen, an actually funny ripoff name of S.C. Johnson, being ruined by adding in space to it. This wouldn't annoy me as much as it does if the show didn't think it was so dang funny. They add it everywhere. Every minute, there's an unfunny meta joke. Every minute, a character does something stupid, ruining a scene that has potential to give us a better look into their personality so that I can resist the urge to throw my computer in the trash can. It's not that the show has absolutely zero funny jokes. With the amount of jokes it throws at you, it kind of has to. But the cons ridiculously outweigh the pros. And uh, that's uh, pretty much everything I have to say about this show. Overall, I rate this episode a 6.60294 out of 10. If you think this show looks good, enjoy it while you can. If you think this show looks terrible, I'm sorry. And it's about to get a whole lot worse.